good evening the viewers of ntv and my dear students of the uae i'm happy to welcome you again for this program my teacher which is the biggest classroom of the uae as you know we've been you know d contributing our time for this lot focusing the contents and the areas of uh, uh, areas you deal in the academics so this specific slot of time be purely devote for the discussion of the contents today i am with you myself is rajiv of charge indian school we going to have a discussion on certain areas of physics today session i'm planning to divide into a few segments in the first segment i will show you an interesting video which will uh, uh, show the amazing technologies which are coming up uh, in the in near future we are in the transition phase nowadays and next we will come back to the serious contents so anyway let me tell you today we will discuss some areas of 11th standard 11th standard physics the last a few contents we will discuss and uh, a, a sp specifically a topic which we call as doppler effect is what we are going to have a discussion on today after which we will uh, the second half we will discuss the uh, some revision questions or the questions which are useful for your examinations especially numerical problems which usually you may be find a little bit difficult but even if uh, we are focusing 11 standard portions i request the 12 standard students as well to watch this program listen to this because in between in case you know i know the the practical board exams are going on to many of you to some of you it might have uh, finished but those who have practical examinations coming up 12 standard children you may be uh, uh, able to get back to us you can call us or you can sms us about your questions or queries you have related to practicals or anything in uh, related to your studies so if uh, possible today itself we'll be able to sort out it and i it will be helpful for you so you can feel free to uh, this is your class you can feel free to get back to us about the practical uh, examinations so 11th standard portion we will discuss numerical problems then we have uh, uh, in between any 12th standard children if you have any questions you can call us or sms us all these are there and in this uh, uh, slot of time let us make use of as good as possible at the same time you know the, uh, the field of science is developing day by day hour by hour what we had 10 day 10 years back that is all outdated now now amazingly the changes are happening right in the in the near future how the technologies may reach uh, that's a small short a video i'll show you watch it and then we can come back to the discussion on physics watch the video <laughs>
Welcome back. So, you've been enjoying this uh, video. You know, the in a 10 years of time in future, let's see what's going to happen, and uh, we will we'll have to wait and see only what kind of technologies we'll have uh, to enjoy the life uh, in the simplest possible way. But let's hope uh, there will be a mechanism to, uh, or let's hope people will find out the mechanisms to find uh, to uh, develop peace and harmony in the world, which is what is uh, uh, really missing these days. By the development of uh, uh, scientific technologies, let's make use of all the uh, available resources to best use of it and uh, let's make use of them uh, for our overall development and overall progress, which is definitely possible because the entire uh, world is in our fingertip. Let us come back to today's discussion. So, we are planning to have some contents to be done from 11th grade. You know the 11th standard children by now they might have uh, shaped up to uh, a perfection to an extent to get into 12th standard. So, soon after your 11th standard examinations you are going getting into 12th as well. So, I hope all of you are in a uh, serious stream of preparations so that uh, you can very first onwards um, the 12th standard portions will cover up with the most seriousness because uh, basically from 11th standard you learn uh, how to learn uh, the physics, chemistry and all effectively. So, by now I think you must might, might have realized about the difficulties and the depth of the contents. So, hope this will help you to do good from very beginning of your 12th standard. Okay, with this note, let me show you a question. In fact, this question I have been asking you whenever we had uh, uh, sessions for uh, grade 11. So, this question again I am going to ask you, let us find out if any answers come from your side. So, if any answers there, if you, if you know the answers, if you know the reasoning of the, uh, this question, and um, you can get back to us so that we will be able to uh, inform that okay this person has got the answer and this is the reason for it. Let us find out. I will show you the uh, question once again. So, you can see the question. This question I have been asking you before as well. This is a question basically meant for 11 standard children. Of course, others as well you try to answer and this is the case of bear looking at the ball it kept at the top of a row, a row of length 20 meters. If it falls to the ground in 2 seconds, what is the color of the bear, which is uh, this is this question sometimes it seems to be a little uh, funny, but still uh, let us see there are certain scientific principles to be applied. More specifically, let me tell you, you can apply the concepts you studied in the chapter gravitation as well as what you studied in the chapter straight line motion. So, 11 standard children please try it out and uh, find out the answer and get back to us and let us see who knows the real answer and who, who can uh, make it out uh, properly. Okay? So, now let us move on to the next thing. See, today as I told you, first part we will discuss some areas of the last portion of your 11th standard physics that is Doppler effect. Well, how many of you are really uh, familiar with the term Doppler effect. Actually, Doppler effect has got lots of applications in the daily life and very um, first we can say the case of Doppler effect that is happening in sound. Before that, all, all, almost all of you must be very well familiar with the radar system for detecting the high speed vehicles, you know, which speed is going with what, how much speed it is going and all. These all are basically uh, based on the principle of Doppler effect, Doppler effect. Okay. So, what is exactly Doppler effect? Before getting into that one more thing, we have one more uh, term to understand that is called redshift. Redshift. What is redshift? That also uh, you must be knowing. So, redshift is actually something related to light, Doppler effect in light. Whereas, a, 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 a basic point you may remember that is when you uh, stand near uh, on the platform of a railway station, you can say a train with the whistling train is coming closer to you. When it comes closer, you hear a higher pitch of sound. Whereas, when you when the train goes away, you hear a 
the, here that the pitch is decreasing. Pitch means what? Frequency. The frequency is decreasing, you may see. Okay, so that is one side. And the other side, we can say the frequency will increase as we uh, go away, as the source goes away. By the way, what does frequency mean? Frequency means it is the number of waves emitted from a source per second. As far as the source is concerned, we can say frequency is nothing but the number of waves emitted by the source per second. Whereas, uh, when you talk about a listener or the receiver, as far as the receiver is concerned, the number of waves received per second, that is what is frequency. So, frequency of reception is there, frequency of emission also is there. If the both source and the listener, if both are listener in, uh, in the case of sound or we can say an observer in the case of light, if both source and the listener, both are at rest, how many waves are emitted from the source, that many waves will be received by the receiver as well. There is no problem, no difference, right? Even the same thing will happen if, if both source and uh, listener, both are moving with the same speed. That is, there is no, or same velocity rather, there is no relative motion. If there is no relative motion or if they are at rest in both the situations, what you can say is whatever the frequency emitted by the source itself is a frequency received by the listener. It means if there is a relative motion, that is the source is at rest but listener is uh, going away, that is train is coming towards you, the listener is at rest. So there is a relative motion or the train is, uh, whistling train is at rest but the a listener is, uh, let us say, is scared of the train, he is running away from the train. So, in that situation also there is a relative motion. Or if they are approaching each other, both are coming towards each other, there is again relative motion. In that situation, the number of waves emitted per second by the source may not be equal to the number of waves received by the second. Maybe he will receive more waves or he will receive less number of waves. So, such a situation, the frequency of emission of the source or from the source may not be the same as the frequency of reception. So, that means there is a difference in frequency between the emission, or emission and the reception. This difference is what is happening due to the relative motion of the source and the listener. This phenomenon is what is called Doppler effect. You know, Doppler effect, therefore, in, in, in uh, proper definition, what you can say, Doppler effect is the phenomenon of apparent change in the frequency, apparent means appear to be changing, right? Uh, Doppler effect is therefore the phenomenon of apparent change in the frequency of uh, uh, sound as heard by the listener whenever there is a relative motion between the source and the listener. Whenever there is a relative motion, relative motion between the source and the listener, there is an apparent change in the frequency of sound heard by the listener. This phenomenon is what is called Doppler effect. Okay, so related to Doppler effect also, uh, I have a small uh, video. So you can see this video. This will give you the idea about what is Doppler effect. You see this. See, a train is approaching. see the difference in the pitch, difference in the frequency, the pitch means frequency. I hope all of you have noticed, see the frequency of the sound coming from the train. One second I will show you the same video, just see the picture, the, the video, how the train is approaching, see observe the speed the sound. I hope it is clear. That is, as it approaches, there is a difference in, as it approaches, there is a difference in the frequency. See, you can make out one thing, like as it clo comes closer and closer, the pitch increases, the frequency increases. But when it goes away, the frequency decreases also, right? So, frequency increases as it uh, comes closer, that is, if the relative motion is in such a way that they are uh, approaching, the source is approaching the listener, then the frequency is increasing. If the relative motion is in such a way that the, uh, the source is going away, the frequency is uh, decreasing. So, frequency increases or decreases depending upon the type of relative motion, this phenomenon of sound is what is called Doppler effect in sound.
how is this Doppler effect applicable in light? This is what I mentioned in the term red shift. Just think of, uh, you might have heard of the theory, Big Bang theory, right, about the origin of the universe. So in Big Bang Theory, uh, see one of the major uh, what he calls as the evidences in Big Bang Theory is redshift. So based on redshift, redshift only people or scientists believe that Big, Big Bang Theory is uh, valid. Okay. So the proof or the evidence of Big Bang Theory is redshift. So what is redshift? Let me tell you something about redshift as well uh, based on the concept of Doppler effect. See the light coming from, so it is related to light. Light coming from star, just God, you know, light has got seven, like visible light has got seven colors, isn't it? Vibjior. Okay, so of which, which one has the longest wavelength? Wavelength, in terms of wavelength, if you say, violet to uh, red, if it goes, the wavelength increases. Violet to red, the wavelength increases. Right? When wavelength increases, we can say wavelength increases further means frequency decreases. Right? So, what we expect from the uh, uh, light coming out, in the light coming from star, we expect the light consists of maximum white light. That is all the seven colors are there. But you know, the actual observation uh, or close observation with uh, appropriate telescopes uh, on the light coming from distant stars, what you can see is the light coming from distant stars, if you observe closely, you can make out one thing that is, it is more uh, rich in red light. Otherwise, it is shifted to red. Shifted to red. Shifted to red means the uh, average frequency is appeared to be decreased. Average frequencies appear to be decreased. That's why it is more red color. So the spectrum coming from a star, a distant star, is appeared to consist or contain more of red. It is shifted towards red side. That phenomenon is red shift. It is shifted to red side. Why it happens or what does it show? It shows that the frequency on an average the frequency is uh, very much reduced. Right? It is something uh, shifting towards red side means shifting towards the longer wavelength side. Longer wavelength side means shorter frequency. Right? So it shows that light coming from a distant star is appear to be containing more red, shifted to red side, meaning frequency decreases, meaning the source is going away. The stars are going away from us. What does it show? The stars are, that is, we have seen according to Doppler effect concept, if the, stores, if the source is receding away, otherwise if there is a relative motion such a way that the source is going away from us, the frequency received by the observer would be reduced. That is what we exactly observe when you observe the light coming from a distant star. That is called redshift. So this kind of a shifting of the frequency shows that the stars are receding away from us. Stars recede away from us. Further means what? The universe is expanding. Universe is expanding. Just like what we do uh, in, like you rewind it. Universe is expanding like this. But, so that means it would have been a whole single mass initially. Initially it would have been a single mass. That's why it, it exploded with the big bang. That's why it is going further and further away. You got that? Got it? So redshift is an application of Doppler effect in light and the redshift shows that stars are receding away from us, which shows that the universe is expanding, which is the evidence of Big Bang Theory. You got it? So, I will just uh, show you another uh, short video which will indicate about uh, Doppler effect itself. Just watch this video.
see the spacing between the waves that will indicate the frequency when the waves are closer and closer each other means frequency is high so like red shift we have blue shift as well if the source is coming towards the listener towards the observer it is blue shift if the source is going away it is red shift you can make out both together in the next segment you can see this one you see it was the case when the source was coming towards the observer now it's going away so the frequency sound is decreasing and the light turns to red side as well you can see the frequency decre decrease increase in frequency decrease in frequency the waves become farther and farther that means frequency is decreasing as it goes away okay so now let's get back to the the content of the doppler effect again so i'll just give you a small equation related to the doppler effect just have, you might have studied this equation in the class see the equation for the frequency you know this letter nu represents the frequency and nu dash represents the apparent frequency right so this is there is an equation v minus vl divided by v minus vs multiplied by new hope you have seen the equation see this is you know what does v represent v is the velocity of the sound vl is the velocity of the listener vs is the velocity of the source new is the original frequency and new dash is the apparent frequency that the frequency is appear to be changed is it clear so if that is the situation you can calculate this is a very fundamental equation which we can make use of to calculate what will be the frequency with which the waves reach the observer or the listener due to the relative motion is it clear now again you see this is this equation is framed in such a way that this is the source giving waves in this way and moving in the same direction see v s and it is approaching towards the listener and the waves are reaching the listener but listener also is moving with the velocity of vl right listener moves with the velocity vl it means all these look at the directions of velocities all the velocities are in the same direction see all the arrows in the same way then in that situation we can make use of this equation but this you take as a fundamental situation and pictureize this uh, with you and uh, case to case like you know Uh, maybe the source is coming towards you maybe the source is at rest and case to case what happens is it may become you know you can modify it say for example if source was at rest then you would take this as zero instead if the source is coming uh, uh, you know uh, against that is always you consider this v as positive otherwise velocity of sound and anything that comes opposite it you take it as negative right so for example if the listener was running towards the source if that's the case this velocity becomes opposite to this so then what you will write this as v minus minus vl so the equation will become v plus vl so remember uh, 11 standard children you will think in this way this equation you memorize this is the equation for the apparent frequency of uh, the sound coming to a listener and for making use of this equation this should be the picture and case to case whatever say for example listen this at rest you put vl as zero the equation would be v by v minus vs into new so in that case let me tell you how we will uh, make use of this doppler effect in radar you know in radar to find out the speed of vehicles so let me tell you about that in radar what the picture is suppose this is the radar is a place the radar is kept okay so this <coughs> radar when it is uh, what to say it is giving out microwaves let's say 
Microwaves have got a very high directional property. You know, its speed is uh, known. How much speed it, with which it is going, that is clearly known. That is V is known, the frequency of the waves. Sorry, the velocity of the waves, that is known. And suppose there is a vehicle coming from, a car is coming from a distance. Car is coming with a velocity or velocity. With a given velocity, the car is coming. Okay. But imagine, the waves are going to the car and from the car, the waves are reflected. So, observe the reflected wave. That is, in this situation, what is relevant is reflected waves. So, the as far as the reflected waves are concerned, the car is the source. How about the radar? Radar is the listener. Clear? Radar is the listener, car is the source. So, in that case, how will you change this equation? What is at rest? Therefore, the listener is at rest. Alright? So, you will put V as 0. So, how will you rewrite the equation? Nu dash is equal to V, listener is at rest. So, V divided by V minus VL. Correct? Because the waves are coming like this and uh, the source also is coming. So, Vs is like this. So, minus Vs. Okay? Multiplied by nu. We know with what frequency, otherwise the device gives out, the radar gives out a given frequency waves, that is nu we know. And V is also fixed, that is the speed with which the microwaves are travelling through the medium, which is nothing but 3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second, that is fixed. How about Vs? That is the unknown quantity. We want to know what is the speed with which the car is coming. But there is a device in radar to measure apparent frequency. What is the frequency appeared to be there for the waves coming? So, the radar knows what is the original frequency and what is the apparent frequency due to the relative motion. So, these two are measured. This is a constant. Then what you can calculate? The, the device in radar calculates the speed. So, this much change in frequency if it have happens, the car has to have this much speed. So, that speed if that speed crosses a particular limit, maybe 100 km per hour, if it crosses that speed, the uh, it flashes. So, the, the system is set up in such a way that if the speed crosses that, actually what, what is measured in radar? The apparent frequency. If the apparent frequency goes beyond a given value, it is, uh, you know, the measuring device is detecting that the car is coming with a speed more than this particular. So, depending upon the uh, area or the road, there will be in highways, it will be kept as a high limit. Right? So, we can say, depending upon what extra, what uh, additional frequency it is uh, appear to be having, accordingly, its speed is up to that extent. So, if that speed goes beyond the expected value, the uh, flash works. This is the working of radar systems. So, in radar, therefore, we make use of Doppler effect. Right? So, now, we will move on to some of the questions we have uh, for revision questions. I, uh, I will, we will come back after a short break. After the break, we will be focusing on the revision questions for 11th standard. So, stay tuned. Before that, one more thing let me tell you. The, any 12th standard students, if you have uh, any confusions about practical examinations or things like that, you can uh, call us. And also, I had given you an SMS question. If you know that uh, answer to that as well, you can go back to us. So, anyway, uh, for the time being, we are going to have a break and stay tuned after which we will have uh, questions to discuss on 11th standard portions. So, say, stay tuned.